We installed Microsoft Visual Studio Code for Windows for use with C and C++. Now let's also add support for Fortran. We need several extensions for that. So search an extension for Fortran. Click on Modern Fortran. Install the Fortran IntelliSense. Install and the Fortran Breakpoint. Install. Now we have six extensions. Once you install extensions, remember to do a reload. Otherwise, many of the possible settings are not showing up. We've done that. Let's go to the project. We have an empty project. Let's go to the command palette and do a make init project. We don't see support for Fortran in here. So what we could do is just select C++ project, which will give us a make file just as before. But let's modify this quickly into Fortran. So we need the compiler gfortran. We need the cpp to be gfortran minus cpp. So this line has to be added. And the reason for that is that Fortran has dependencies and in particular for modules, it needs this to be set. So make sure it's set to gfortran minus cpp. And then there are options which are specific to C++. Let's remove that and add some options like debug information in the executable, switch off the optimization and add some additional warnings. The last modification is to say that the extension should end at Fortran 90. So let's save this. Now let's go to source and create a new file. So that has to be main.f90. The moment you do that, you see a complaint that the gfortran can't be found and the fortran language server cannot be found. So the IntelliSense does not auto detect the MCS2 system. We need to specify these by, by hand by going to the settings. Settings and search for Fortran executable. You will see two options, the Fort LS and the gfortran. So what we need to do is specify the full path for the gfortran. This will be the mc64 mingw64 slash bin gfortran.x. And we need to do the same for the Fortran language server and set it to this one. So now we've both specified. Notice that in the graphical interface, you specify a single backslash. Let's look at what is done in the settings.json. And there you can see it's set with a double backslash. So remember that once you put a path in the settings.json, double backslash, and in the graphical environment, a single backslash. With that, let's go back to Fortran F90. I type in a few characters and now you see that program is a program skeleton. Let's click on it. It expands. So now the intelligence of the Fortran is kicking in. Let's create an integer. Set its value to 10. Unreal. Let's set its value to a floating point number. And let's print some hello world. And let's print out the two variables. So we've laid the groundwork already because the code runner did also include the Fortran files. So we can now simply click on the play button to compile. We see here the command that it runs. It goes into the project. It does the make and runs the my app. It uses the Fortran and we see here the hello world from Fortran with the two values. Lastly, let's test the debugger. So let's put a break point over here. Let's click on this one, run and debug, and choose Fortran GDB. There are a few settings that we need to set. Obviously the executable that we want to debug, which is the my app. Let's fix a small issue over here. And then we also need to set the path to the GDB debugger explicitly. So let's do that. And remember that we now need the double backslashes. Let's save. Start the debugger. It stops at the breakpoint and we can see that we can expect, inspect the values in the debugger. So this concludes the setup for C, C++ and Fortran. 
In the next video, we're going to look at the Windows subsystem for Linux, which is an alternative to the MSIS2 system.